What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today what we're gonna do is we're going we're gonna do this problem. I saw this problem on lead code where we have an array and we need to split it into k subarrays such that the maximum of each subarray is as large as possible. Alright. Now now we're gonna do a variation of this problem where we're going to basically just split the array into k subarrays such that just all the possible get all possible combinations of it. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Let's say our, our array is one, two, three, four, five, six, and we need to split it into k equal to three. So we're gonna split it into three subarrays. And what, what I mean by a subarray is that they're contiguous subarrays. So I take one, and then I split it by one, then I split by two, and then I have three, four, five, six. I'm not, what I'm not doing is I'm not taking one and then taking four. Okay, I'm not taking one and then taking six, okay? So, as you can see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Where one and two are individual subarrays, and then we have three, four, five, six as the last subarray. And in each of these, the length is only three, right? We only have three subarrays in each of these because k is equal to three. We're splitting the array into three different subarrays, three contiguous subarrays. In the second one, we're also splitting it by three. So you have one, two, three, then four, five, six. As you can see here, we have two, three is three is was in the previous, in the previous array, but now it's in the same array as two. So we have two, three, then four, five, six. Then we have one, then we have three, two, three, four, then we have five, six, right? Then we have one, we split it by one, and then we have two, three, four, five, then we have six. Now the next one, we cannot have one, then two, three, four, five, and then add six to it. We cannot do that. And the reason why we cannot do that is because then our k is not going to equal to three anymore, right? Our k would only have, um, our k would be, would only have two values, right? We need to split this array into three groups. So that's why this is the last possible third group you could have in this situation of one, then two, three, four, five, then six. Now in the second, in the th third one, we have one, two. One, two is in one group now, and then we have three then we have four, five, six, then we have one, two, then three, four, then we have five, six, then we have one, two, then three, four, five, then we have six, then we have one, two, three, then we have four, then we have five, six, then we have one, two, three, then we have four, five, and then we have six, then we have one, two, three, four, then we have five, then six. And the reason why we cannot have this five inside this one, two, three, four is because then we won't have three subgroups, okay? We won't have three subgroups when we try to split it by. Okay, so I think you guys understand what I mean by this and by splitting it into three different subgroups, okay? Subarrays. So how do you do this problem? Um, first of all, we need to... Each row here is going to represent a different combination that you could split it by, right? We have one, two, then three, four, five, six. That's one possible combination. Then we have one, then one, then two, three, then four, five, six. That's another combination. So each of these rows are individual 2D arrays, right? If you could see here, we have each of these rows are 2D arrays. So the first thing we need is we need a, a global variable called whatever it is, whatever, I'm gonna call it all combinations, where it's a three-dimensional array, like a three-dimensional array, and each of the row is going to represent each combination that you could possibly have and in each row, it's a two-dimensional two array, right? We have one, two, then three, four, five, six. Then we have one, then two, three, then four, five, six. Then we have one, two, three, four, then five, six, and so on and so forth. So the first thing you need to do is uh, I'm actually going to create, re, re, recode this up as if I've never coded it before, okay? So, all right, so here I have, uh, yeah, I'll just recode this up since I never, assuming I never coded this up before. So I'll code it up for you guys. So let's say I have my array of one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a vector. Then I need my all combinations. And all combinations, like I told you before, it's just going to be a vector, vector, vector integer, right? It's going to just be a three dimensional array where each row is going to be a two dimensional array of each subarrays that we're splitting by. So if I'm gonna have this function, I'm gonna call, I'll call it solve. I need all combinations, 
right? I need it. And the reason why is because in each combination that I'm generating, I need to add my new combination into the all combinations, this variable of all combinations every single time, okay? What else do I need? Well, I need my array, right? If, if I don't have my array, I can't split it, so I need to pass that in. Okay, what else do I need? Well, I need my k value, right? Because I need my k, like I need to split it into three different subarrays, and if I don't have my k, then like I don't know how many subarrays I'm splitting it by, right? I don't know how many different arrays I could split it by, so that's why I need my k. Now, um, now it's going to get a little tricky. It's going to. This is going to get a little tricky. Okay. As you can see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. The next one we have one, then two, three. Right. So this the the location that we're splitting by, the index we're splitting by, got moved up by one. Right, we have two, three. So this next location was now split. This two, three was originally in three, four, five, six. Now it's coming up to two, three. So that's where this is now. So that's split about that. Then the four that we split it by, the index where we split it by, we originally split it by three, now it's four. So now this four is now in two, three, four. So what we need is we need an index that we're gonna keep incrementing up by one as we recursively call this function, and that's going to represent the location that we're splitting by. So we need to pass this in. I create an index called zero, index index equal to zero, and I'm just going to start from the beginning, and yeah, I'll pass that, in my, in, pass that into my function. Okay, here's the part where it's gonna get a little tricky. So we have each our total combination array, right? That's a three dimensional array. What do I need now? Well. In each row, it's a new combination, right? It's a new combination of different subarrays that I'm splitting by. So we have, see, in each row we have one as this individual, then two, then we have three, four, five, six. Then this one is gonna be one, then two, three, then four, five, six. Then the next one is another combination of one, two, three, four, then five, six. So in each row, what we need is if we're gonna keep modifying our previous, previous row, we need to recursively pass in a, a combination array, a combination array that has each subarray inside of it, right? A combination that has each individual subarrays. So this row is gonna represent how many different subarrays and in each of them, it's going to have each subarray. So what is that? That's a two dimensional array and in which each of these rows are the three subarrays that we're splitting by. So we need to have this vector, vector int, each combination. I'll call it each combination. Okay. And then what else do we need? Well, we need uh, the, since we're recursively adding this new subarray into each row, right? We would also need is that we need each individual subarray. Okay. So look at if we have each combination, each of these combinations have individual subarrays that we split it by one, then two, then three, four, five, six. So because of this, we need our each uh, subarray, which is going to be just a vector of integers. So we have this vector integers, each subarray. This is going to be the each group that we're splitting by, see each of these individual groups. So we're going to pass that in. So here I have, I'm going to pass in, I have my array, my k, that I'm splitting by the index, and then I'm going to have each subarray, then I'm going to have each combination. And then I have all of my combinations that I have. Okay, so now let's actually write this method and then we could do this. We'll be on our way. So uh, I'll just take this out and just recode it. Void solve, let's put this here. Oh, whoops. And I'm gonna write the method types. So the first array is just gonna be vector integer, passing in. The k is just going to be an integer, right? The index is just going to be an integer also. Uh, each subarray is going to be a vector of integers, right? Each subarray is a vector of integers. Each combination is going to be a vector of vector combinations. Um, all combinations is a triple vector, a 3D array. So I believe that's right. 
I'm missing one. Yeah, all combinations. Okay. So let's see which one we need to pass in by value and which one we're modifying. So uh, we're going to pass in by reference for array because, yeah, it's not good to keep, keep a copy of that. And the integers, we could leave that as that. Um, each subarray, I'll explain why we're not passing by reference later, later afterwards. Each subarray, and then we have each combination. We're going to pass by reference because we need that. And then uh, all combinations, we're going to pass by reference because we need that. Okay. So what am I going to do in this function? Well, I'm going to recursively call this function called solve, and I'm going to pass in my array, my k. And um, how am I going to do this? Well, every time I call this function, I'm going to split the array. I'm literally just going to split the array, right, into its individual subarrays. So every time I split an array, the number of remaining subarrays gets decreased by one. Do you understand? Because if I have three, if I have three, three groups, I need to split it by, right? I have k equal to three, and then I I have already split it by one, so I've already split it by one. Then I have two remaining groups I need to split, right? Then once I split it by two, uh, at this two, split it at this two location, then only I only have one group remaining that I need to split it by. Then once I split it by here at this after this two, then I have three, four, five, six. Then I have zero groups I need to split it by, and then at at that point, my function ends. So every time we recursively call this function, I'm going to decrease my k value by one, because Every time I split it, the number remaining number of arrays I need gets decreased by one. So I'm going to use k minus one. Now, well, about our index. Well, we are, what we're going to do is, as you could see, look, looking at through this pattern, is that we need to incre increment our index by one every time. Okay. So you have we have two, we have one, and then two. Right. In this case, two was split at this part right after the two. Okay, then we have three, four, five, six. Then here we have one, then two, three. So this, the location that we split it by was not, is now after the three. And the, this three is actually in the same subarray as the two. So we split it there, and then we have four, five, six. Then we have one, then we have two, three, four. So we're gonna split it at this location at four. Then we have two, three, four, and then we have five, six. So every time I call this function, I'm just gonna increase my index by one, because that's gonna be how the location that I'm splitting by gets incremented by one every time. See, four, five, and then five, six, and so on and so forth. Then I have my each subarray, and then I just have my each column, um, each column, column, and then I have my all combinations. Okay, all right. Okay, so. What do I need to do now? Okay, so we have our recursively call our function here. What do we need to do now? Okay, well we need a we need to every time we recursively call this function, we need to add our current subarray that we're splitting by to each row of the combinations array. So as you can see here, let's say I have we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and I split it by one. Well, I, well, let's say I already have this one here that I already split it in my new subarray. I need to take this one and add it into my com each combination that I could possibly have, right? Because I have a, if I have one here, I split it by one. I need to add this one into my combination array, right? Then it, when, if I split it by two, like right after two, then I need to take this two that I just new subarray that I created of two, then add it into my new combination array. Then if I split by three, four, five, six, I'm gonna take the subarray and then add it to this new combination array. So if the k value, and not k, if uh, each subarray is not empty, right? If the area that I'm splitting it by is not empty, then I'm just gonna add it to my combination array. Right? Each of these, after you split it by, you need to add this new subarray into your combination array. Okay. Now, now we need to think about our base case. What is our base case? Okay. So we are decreasing the number of 
subarrays, we're splitting each subarray, right? We have the original one, two, three, four, five, six. We're splitting it by one and we split it by two. Let's say I'm on the last subarray. So what is that last subarray, right? Because we're decreasing the subarray every single time we're splitting it, like the number of subarrays k minus one every time, the last one is gonna be when k is equal to one. Okay? So like if k is equal to one, from here, this location, right? So let's say I split it by one. So now originally I had three subarrays I needed to split by. That got decreased by three. So the three minus one is, will be two. Then I split it after this two. Then this two gets added to the array and it gets decreased by one. So now, then now I have one. When k is equal to one, that's my last subarray. So that's gonna be the last subarray that I need to split it by. Okay. So let's say I'm on the last subarray when the k is equal to one. What do I need to do? Well, I need to loop through from the index and just add all the remaining values that I need, right? I don't need to like, like pop things or push anything. At this point, all I need to do is start where I'm starting at, this index I'm starting, and just loop through to the end and add it to my last subarray. And then I need to take that and add it to my combination array. So that's all I need to do. So here I'm gonna create a array called last. And then I'm just gonna loop through from my index. I'll start from I into my index. I'll loop through to the end. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take last and push back, add it to my uh, array index of I. And then from here, I'm just going to add it to my combination array. So each combination. Okay, you guys understand what I'm, you guys following along? I'm gonna push by add it to my last combination. Okay, and then I'm just gonna return after this because we add it to our last combination three, four, five, six. And then once we're done with this, we just return it. Okay, we just return it. Right, we return and then we need to get our new combination. Now, let's look back at into our code. Let's look back into our code. Uh, let me just make sure I follow this along. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, push back, okay, yeah. Okay, um, now, now we're gonna add this last array into our combination array, okay? Now, uh, there's some s tricky situations where the last like where we're splitting by could be empty. So let's actually check if it's not empty. It's just like a case of, like every time you add something, you should check if it's not empty. Because otherwise it might give you like an empty thing. Okay. Okay, so now we push back our each combination array, then we need to pop it back. Okay, so each array got pushed back, okay, each combination. Once we pushed this back of our combination, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Um, I need to add this to this type of combination into our global array, our total array, right, that we need, we have. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go to all combinations, and I'm just gonna add the current combination. Okay. Here's gonna be a little tricky part. There's gonna be backtracking. What do you see here? We have one, two, then three, four, five, six. Um, we have each combination, which is one, then two, then three, four, five, six. Let's say we have this first combination already. Look at the second combination. Do I really need to do, what is the difference between the first and the second? The only difference is the location I'm splitting by, right? The first two values are still there, one, two, and the only difference is that now my the location I'm swinging by is there. So do I really need to copy all the values from before and put it here? Technically, I don't. I still have my previous combination, right? My previous combination is one, two, then three, four, five, six that I generated. Now, 
what I could do is I could just, the only difference that we have from here is just the last element, right? This last element is three, four, five, six. What I, all I have to do is literally just remove this last element, okay? And the reason why is because if I just remove this last array, all I have to do, right, I have the one and the two here already, all I need to do is just take the next index, the value at the next index, and just add it to my previous array of three and two and three, right? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Right, if, I, if I'm on the last one, right, I, let's say I already added this into my new combination array, I don't need to copy all the previous elements. All I have to do is just remove the last element and then add, add, it, add a new element, change the last array again, and then add another combination. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do each combination dot pop back. And what this does is it removes the last subarray of three, four, five, six. That's gone. And then I could just go to the next one, add the three into my previous two, and then add the four and five, six. Then I just remove four, five, six, add four into my previous two, three. Then I have five, six. Then I just remove the five, six. Take the five, add it to my previous two, three, four, five, then remove, then that's it. Okay, so that's basically our base case. All right, we have our base case. We have the uh, what we're adding every single time, and so on and so forth. All right, now we need to think about how we're going to pass in solve. Okay, so. Each of the array that we're having is going to be this, okay? Let's say we're at two, one, two, and then three, four, five, six. We added this already. Then we go to the next one, right? We are, we, we, we go to the next one, okay? Now we, how do I get from here, one, two, then three, four, five, six, two, one, to this array of one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so let's say I already popped the last element of three, four, and five, six, right? Uh, what, what, what I need to do now is that I need to generate the next possible array, right? The next possible array. So the next array I need to split it by is going to be four, five, and six, right? I move the index up by one. I added the three into the previous one, and then I need to add four, five, and six. So the next array that we're adding is, has to be empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually clear each subarray. So I'm going to do each sub dot clear. And what this does is it's going to completely erase all the elements in it and then have our a new subarray that we're adding. Okay. So now what am I going to do? I need to loop through. I'm going to loop through here and just continuously add the next, uh, what am I missing? Oh, so remember, let's say we have two, three, one, two, and then three, four, five, six. What am I going to do is I'm going to go to the next location I could split it by. So we have one, two, then three, four, five, six, right? I'm going to go to three then split three, four, five, six. Then after this index, I'm gonna to go to four, split it. Then I'm gonna to go to five and split it. Then when it calls to go back to the beginning of one, two, I need to loop through from here to the end again and split it after the two. Then we have three, split it there. Then four, go to the loop to the end, split it. One, two, then I have three, four. Then I split it from four, then go to the five, six and split it so on and so forth. So in this case, I need to actually put this into a for loop. And I'm going to just increment my index to split it every single time. Okay. And um, yeah, now every single time I call this, I need to add a every time I add a loop through here and uh, split it of where I'm increasing my index to split it at, um, I need to essentially is regenerate a new array, right? So like we have two, then you have three, right? 
you have two, this two was originally two, and then it becomes two, three, and you have two, three, four, and so on and so forth. So before I generate this, I'm going to actually push back the current value at my current index. Okay, and then, uh, yeah. Then after I push back the current value at the current index, I recursively call my solve function, then, uh, then what I need to do is just check if the combination array is empty. Okay, so like let's say I am at, um, yeah, so let's say I'm at like one, this part, one, two, three, four, five, six, then I move my next index to split at three, then I split at four, then I split at five, and I'm done you here. This recursive call is going to get at one two, okay? So how do I get from one two? Well, simple. I need to go back to my previous combination, each combination. I need to pop it, so remove the last elements. So before here, we would add like uh, one, then two, three, four, five, then six, right? Um, at the end of this, it already popped the six out to generate the next one, right? And then it tries to generate uh, one and then two, three, four, five, six, where the six is at the previous one, then it can't add it, right? So then it pops, it goes back to here. So now now we're going to have just one single element of one. Then in order to get the next one, I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop and remove the two, three, four, five. All right, I'm gonna remove this previous, previous uh, array, subarray in our previous combination. So to do that, I'm just going to go do if each sub is not empty. I believe it's each sub. Uh, yeah, each sub is not empty. I'm going to pop it. So yeah, then when it comes back up to the top, it go to the next one. So it'll generate the next one and so on and so forth. So yeah, um, that's basically the gist of the code. I'll just run it real quick for you guys. Show you what it does. Make sure this runs properly, actually. Oh yeah, I should show you guys how to print it out. Because now you have like all the possible combinations, but you don't, you can't print it out. Okay. Um, I don't know why it's taking forever. Du, 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 du. Hold up. Uh, I plus one new sub glob. Each sub array is not. Uh, then just pop it. Each sub array. Oh, oh, wait. Each combination. Oh, my fault. This should be each combination. So, yeah. Each time you push the subarray back, yeah. So, yeah, that, that was supposed to be each combination, All right. So, every time you call this, and uh, you finish your combination of one, two, three, four, five, right? Uh, you need to pop the last combination out because, you know. When you generate the next one, you pop the six, you pop the one, two, three, two, three, four, five, then you could go on to one and two. So you need to pop the combination. It's not the subarray. The subarray is just the individual element here, right? So yeah. Um, yeah, I'll show you guys how to print this now. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to loop through every the, our three-dimensional combinations. I'll print out a bracket, then I'll loop through from j equals zero to all combinations on size. Print out another bracket. I'm gonna loop through from k to all combinations at size. So I'm gonna go through all my all my my two dimensional three dimensional array. Then I'm gonna go through every single two two dimensional array inside of it, and then I'm just gonna go through every single individual array and print it out. So go through three dimensional array, print it out. Two dimensional array, print this out, and then each individual array, print it out. Then just if it's not, but yeah. If I'm not at the last element, uh, I'll just print out a comma at the end. 
then at the end, I'll just print out another bracket. So yeah, and then in each of these, I print another bracket also. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of the code. Hope you guys enjoy this video. This is a fun video to generate all possible. Uh, split it by cake combinations. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.